Kia ora, New Zealand. Kia ora, Aotearoa. Welcome on board. This is a beautiful uh, episode of Talkback. And uh, it's your host here, Benny Mack. And I am joined by the producer, Selenia. Let's bring her on through. And uh, <laughs> Selenia, we've got a spicy one uh, for this a date, sort of date night ep tonight. Tell us who we got on tonight's show. Uh, none other than Matt Starboy Belden. Oh, okay. boom. Yes. A biggie. He's, uh, mm-hmm. he's um, the party pill king uh, from way back. And, uh, you know, he's just transitioned. He's an entrepreneur. So he's, he knows how to transition himself into the uh, the ways and the times. He moves with the exactly. times. And he's very intelligent and he's very uh, forward thinking. And his site is Extra Life. We're going to plug that a little bit later. But, He's um, kind of got like this hyper focused vision. I like that about the guy. He's more than just one thing. I mean, yeah. h- how's life? How's things in your world? You've been going through a bit, but you're here with us tonight. You're making the machine stay on the track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just seeing. I'm um, walking. Uh, my flight was delayed, and um, I just had to get all the stuff done. And I'm just like, <sighs> but yeah, I felt great. I felt great. And my heart got. Total heart palpitations about tonight. I'm just so excited. So uh, okay, great. Yeah. You've got heart palpitations. Me, <laughs> um, my ve- my left ventricle and my right ventricle seem to be working in unison. This is going to be a big show tonight. So without further ado, let's bring on through Starboy Matt Bowden. <laughs> Bazang. Well, let's bring him on Red. to Starboy. Mate, it's awesome to have you back on. Hey, today. how you doing? Uh, bloody excellent, mate. Bloody excellent. And um, I'm here in the lab, and you look like you're in some sort of a zen lounge. Yeah, this is a zen lounge. This is, um, I'm actually inside a pyramid right at the moment, and I'm just thinking oh. about whether it's time to open the sarcophagus. He's been in there a while. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's ready. I'm somewhere, maybe in your lab, you've got one of those, a spiky thing with a temperature gauge on. I could stick it in there and see if he's cooked. What do you reckon? We do. We do have a thermoprobe. And yes, it is here down in the lab. I reckon he's well cooked uh, by the sounds of it. Um, you know, once once they've sort of sustained 300 degrees for over anywhere over 15 minutes, you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything left in there? We you know, t- where Egyptian um, Egyptian um, mummies, I guess we'll just call them, were actually harvested and used as a health supplement. And so the idea being that if they had managed to stay uh, solid all that long and not d- degrade and rot, then you could eat that and rub it on your skin and maybe you'd live forever as well. I mean, the logic falls over a little because the guy's dead, but it didn't stop him. And so there, there's a lot of... I mean. Health supplement crazes have been going on for a long time. Let's cut to the full screen shot if we can here. Now, this is something out of ancient Egypt. It looks like something uh, that maybe you uh, found. I don't know. Where would you where would you procure an item such as this with the glowing eyes and everything? Uh, there's actually a very beautiful story that goes with it. I wonder if it's too sensitive to say, but this was this was a um, I inherited this from a dear friend, Logan Miller, who some people out there will know. Logan was one of the guys in the party pool industry with the A-class pills, who um, sadly had a was one of those candles that burns twice as bright for only half as long. And um, after he passed on, I got the sarcophagus. I've just been building up the strength to open it and see what's in there. <laughs> wow, man! It sounds like a uh, some sort of adventure movie. And uh, my regards go out to Logan Miller and and the family. Uh, and but on a brighter note, um, I just saw a um, a video drop there uh, recently on Vice channel again on over on YouTube. How how did you get much response from that? Yeah, I know. I think um, maybe half a million to a million people have seen that, and a percentage of them have dropped me a line. So it's been a busy week. Um, but yeah, Vice, War on Drugs. We're just telling the story of the war on drugs again. And New Zealand always has a chapter in that now of how 
uh, we kind of pragmatically came up with the best idea for, well, why don't we just have some quality control and um, and just make the drugs safer and then just sell them in the shops to grown-ups and then the problem will go away. And um, we, for a golden moment, the whole world looked at us and said, that's a bloody good idea. The United Nations Drug Control Office said it's the only solution on their table for the emerging drugs threat. Which I thought was great. I was going to get nice, but um, the alcohol industry said, "No, nah, no, nah, let's just sleep it how it is." And some other invisible forces rised up. Pretend, maybe people that were making money out of the drugs being illegal, and they kind of jumped on it real fast. Um, right. Okay. So, if I so, find that story again, yeah. So that's an interesting story. It's an old story. It's sort of one that's taken time for us. Now we can reminisce and. And think back, but but looking forwards, where it's the story's totally changed. Now it's if you've got drugs, whether they're, it's cocaine, maybe you've got a little bit of heroin, maybe you've got a kilo of MDMA, for God's sake, uh, all good. Uh, come on down, bring it with you. You only need to bring a little bit, but if you bring a lot, don't worry, we'll only test a little bit, and you can hang on to the rest. No questions asked. We could make some kilos of MDMA in that room behind you, bro. But <laughs> the point of it now is that we're is that it's a little bit more grown up now. It's kind of like um, drugs for a long time. People were using so, oh, oh no, the dream. Someone's burst your bubble. That happened to me as well with mine, bro. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like all the cultures in the world had been using psychoactives since the dawn of time for people to, as a tool for people to process their trauma and better process their emo emotions and hook up. It's only a Western kind of culture that thought, we don't really know how to use these. What's going on? Uh, we like our beers and our wines and our vodka. What's that stuff for? And now we've all sort of been able to have a conversation and say, no, 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 it's not for getting messed up. This is for when you are messed up, for getting untangled again. We're Ah, oh, gradually we're working out how to psilocybin from mushrooms and um, uh, the ergot alkaloids like LSD in that. They're actually medicines. We were just using them wrong. Mm, okay. So, so is the in saying that is the right right place to use these drugs uh, in the wee early hours of the morning um, in a club uh, on a dance floor or at a festival over summer? Um, what what why is uh, cannabis, uh, a, 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 a drug that came out about 50-50 in the, the referendum. However, that's, that's illegal, that's bad, but other drugs such as party recreational drugs at festival style drugs are supposedly okay because they'll test them out in the open and send you on your merry way. This is the sort of head space, uh, strange mentality that I can't understand. Um, it's a, yes. you said it's a sort of a, a drug that unlocks part of your personality, lets you explore. Uh, but is that space to do that with strangers at festivals, or is there a better place to do that uh, at a bush in, in the middle of the bush, or? Um, well, we're, I think we're social creatures, really, aren't we? And the time that we learn the most about ourselves is when we're interacting with other people. I've learned so much being a parent, for instance, you know, you, you learn so much really about yourself. And it's the same thing with uh, with socialization. I mean, if you when you go out to a party, um, if you're I mean, I'm quite a social person. Um, I like to talk a lot and stuff. It's, you, it's talking to other people. You learn about them, but you learn about yourself. And this has been the actual appropriate context things, psychoactives and um, substances which cause you to think a little differently is um, that changes the way you interact with others. And being around other people, also if you're with some of them, like um, things like magic mushrooms or um, LSD, things which are psychedelic, um, you sort of depersonalize a little bit and you lose connection with that you're in and you start to become aware of other dimensions and other things around you. Sometimes that can be a little bit spooky and it's good to have other people around. So I think you actually learn quite a lot interacting with others. And um, if you're in a place where you've used something which is a disinhibitor, then traditionally maybe maybe once a month at the full moon, everybody comes together to celebrate the harvest, you know, in ancient sort of civilizations and cultures, as we come together to celebrate, that's the time where if you've got some beef with your brother, you can talk it out and work out your issues so that we've got a more cohesive community. And it's actually good to do that um, if you've had 
Like if you've ever had someone like MDMA or one of those disinhibitors, you find that um, you can approach even your partner who you've been unable to talk to and you can talk out issues or other people in the community you've had some beef with and you can work it out. We did a clinical trial um, a few years ago for a drug we called Ease, which was like an ecstasy, yeah. which had been tidied up a little bit. And the comments we got back from people were like couples who had um, who were ready to divorce. They'd tried everything. They'd tried therapy and they were unable to really uh, connect and get that magic back they had to start with. After they had a couple of pills of Ease, um, with that serotonin release, all of the fears and things that they were unable to um, address in their conversation with each other previously because they were too scared, the fears are suppressed and people are able to just talk and go, actually, I'm just really scared. Um, I have been since I was a child about this thing and now I can talk about it for some reason and it's okay, I still love you. I know that you do that. I still love you. It's good. Oh, really? Yay, hooray. Whatever it is. You could, people are able to work out issues and get past those impasses that have um, hindered and blocked their relationship that otherwise might be destroying it. And so I'm really looking forward to the renaissance or the, the, the time. I'm mean, we're at a point now where we're designing newer alternatives to these kind of drugs, uh, which are less toxic. Um, and then I'm looking forward to the, someone said to me today, you're going to get all these letters back in from people who have, you know, been able to save their marriage or whatever. And that's what I'm looking forward to is that moment in about, I don't know, maybe five years. <laughs> Okay, so um, is this kind of like um, you said something about neuro drugs? Is this kind of like um, digital drugs or some sort of um, w w when is it going to be that the the drugs not a pill but a program? What, so, when do we get there, or is okay. it a program already? So right now, if you want to learn more about that and out there, just grab your whole keyboard and just go A for Alpha, J for Jesus, N A for Alpha, and so that's um Arjuna. And look up the Arjuna light, the Arjuna light. If you sit in front of it, a guy called Guy Harriman, I work with him, let's work on this. It flashes all these frequencies, and the frequencies which the um which are flashing in front of your eyes. You close your eyes when you sit in front of it. They, they create um, corresponding frequencies in your brainwave patterns, and they have a similar effect to taking some DMT or something. So we're actually there already. You can, <laughs> uh, there are devices which will take you into different states of mind. You kind of change the channel in your brain, if you like, um, so that you're able to process. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I guess um, mm. I guess some people consider foot float tanks to have a similar uh, quality, in, in that you're. Uh, have don't, you have no other outs, out, out of stimulus uh, other than uh, the water. So what, I, I'm a little bit distracted. I've got a flat screen TV here and I'm just um, navigating to the broadcast and so I can have it in HD. Boom, up there. Um, what about holotropic so breath work? And there's guys, um, if someone, there's people that do this and if anyone wants to try it, get in contact with it, put you in contact with them but just going through different breathing patterns you can step yes. your brain through different sort of gears and mind states as well and come into amazing sort of states of elevated states of consciousness yeah well that's uh interesting you say that because i'm sure that you've heard of um vim hof uh also known as iceman yeah and um so his techniques um center around uh using your conscious to control your subconscious through breathing through breathing techniques so um when most people's bodies would react on a subconscious level to changes in the environment like temperature or cold cold or heat or even stress um through the use of breathing techniques you can uh you know, get get on a different plane and level and uh, <laughs> breathe through the scenario and you know and it, and for example, if you're in a sauna, it's a, it is important to be aware of your breathing. A lot of people um, can can be the principal cause of anxiety, and a lot of people is they lose their their breath when to breathe, you know, and then that creates a panic of so breathing is a very strong force and it is sort of our it is sort of the rhythm of life isn't it 
like a totally word. yeah breath is life and then there's other i did another amazing thing the other day um with a friend which was a, a gong bath if you've ever heard of a gong bath but um we were doing these in chiang mai as well and so it's a, a big gong as well as just bashing it like at the end of a iron maiden song or something gongs there's so many different tones you can get out of them and um an experienced kind of practitioner will um will take you on a real journey and you kind of lie there with your eyes closed and um by halfway through you won't remember if you took some acid or not because your, your mind just this the frequency just doesn't come in through your ears your whole body sort of in the whole room's kind of reverberating and as it goes through these different sort of patterns of different journeys um you start having visualizations and th seeing things and and other creatures and beings and other worlds and you, you go on an amazing kind of a journey and so there's so many different ways to access this meditation of course is the other sort of key way i spent a bunch of time in in um in thailand and that and doing the past and it's just meditation just sitting just mm, just you just think only about your breathing and as your mind stops processing all the other crap that it's trying to do when it's in that beta mind state and comes back to alpha and just focuses on here now here now um you find that your your higher self kind of opens up and you can again see into other realms and perceive quite a lot more mm. yeah it's interesting that um are you uh have you used sauna uh at all as part of um your sort of uh, recreation or health regimen at any stage in your life um no so instead i'm going to bounce the question back and say i got invited to go and try an ozone spa this week Ooh, an ozone lovely. Spa. and so there's a place and it's is it called i think it's called global health or something and it's kind of in takapuna if you were booting away over the bridge, you got off at Esmond Road, you get to the Esmond Road and you've got to make that choice, turn left into yes. Lake, Lake Road or go right towards Devonport, turn right and right on that corner there's this amazing um, advanced health where um, they deal with things like uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, um, long COVID or if you want to call it that, if you're allowed to say the C word, um, yep. different sort of therapies. And one of them is ozone spa and for people who've got that um, slow recovery, um yes I could be buying my spice or try ozone spa so it pushes into the blood and pushes other crap out i'm not sure exactly how it works i'm gonna have to look into that before our next time um oh yeah. good yeah because i mean um as far as keeping the water in a pool uh clean you've got a few options you can either use your chlorine <laughs> your salt water or your ozone those are the general sort of ones and uh i mean this ozone spa it um is it you know, breathing a lot of chemicals ozone or is it drinking more ozone or are they going to take some blood out ozonate it, and inject it back in i'm not exactly sure what i'm getting myself <laughs> up in for, oh, but right. I'll, I'll report back uh, yeah right 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 yeah, well, yeah. that's it. I mean, it's a spa, right? So it might not actually be a spa pool. It might be some sort of mask or a Maybe. room or... I'm going to have to report okay, back. Well, or we're going to get an update, I'm sure. Field. Yeah. But they've got hyperbaric yeah. oxygen. Well, I think... Well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you're talking. Now that's uh, pressure, isn't it? Yeah, it's like if someone's been diving and they didn't quite come back right and they need to sort of repressurize, they'll go in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber to try to undo that um, nitrogen sickness. Narcosis, <laughs> yeah. Nitrogen yeah. narcosis, not a pretty sight. Bubbles in the blood, if you will. And yeah. um, I guess the opposite or the other version of that is kind of like the cryo chambers. Have you ever tried that? no where, where they basically it's kind of like a sauna but it's it's the f freezing one no i've been to kelly talton's where you have to put your hand in the thing <laughs> and um i wonder if anyone's ever got stuck or if anyone's you know lost a finger or something where's fiona it's asking in the ice. <laughs> uh yo um wim hof yes oliver wim hof's yes, cool i've been the netherlands for a while where wim hof is like um you know how like some people have got like you go to india and they've got all those gods well in the netherlands there's yeah. wim hof you know and so you go to the science museum and there's like a shrine to wim hof you know wim hof let's go in the eye <laughs> <What do you laughs> <need?" laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's a wild dude. And um, I mean, I've done the uh, the saunas. You you get there. There was this place I was staying had a wood fire sauna, so I'd be chopping the wood, getting the the sauna really good and toasty. And then out the side there, I'd have a barrel full of chocker full of cold water. Sometimes I'd um, hunk up huge chunks of ice and throw them in there. But uh, it, it, it's quite a great experience. And um, it certainly gets you focusing on your breathing and on your, uh, on your heart. You can really feel your heart sort of in your chest yeah. beating. And, and um, you know, you, people will get headaches during the day and, you know, just through the pressures of life and this and that. And I find that um, cold water is one of the best ways to really just relieve a lot of pressure. And right. um, yeah, it's an incredible experience. Have you done the ice bath challenge? Selena's saying Benny's ice bath challenge. I think it looks like a request, like someone wants you to bring this into the show as an activity or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll um, so the end of last year, we, we had a few ice ice challenges. And actually on Christmas Day, I had the sauna cranked so uh, cranked up so much that the fire brigade turned up. Oh. Yeah, they came to my house once as well. <laughs> How did your day go when they showed up? Oh, it wasn't a problem, actually. It wasn't a problem. Um, they thought it was quite comical. And uh, I could see sort of flashing lights and things from in, within the sauna there. So I thought I'd... Um, check and see on the situation and it was all right yeah it's hot 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 and there was actually a heat do you remember there was a heat wave on christmas day uh like uh 2021 uh yeah yeah like little known fact there was actually Uh, a fucking heat wave right around that time and everyone was melting and they were like um you're having a sauna it's a fucking heat wave Dude, uh, yeah, right. Fire yeah. Out. Imagine firemaning for Christmas. Bloody lead. Yeah, they deserve their own calendar. What the hell? Oh, exactly. I mean, yeah, as you say, working like that hard on Christmas Day. Totals. Geniuses. Great guys. Absolutely. Oh, Real yeah. service to the community. Now, so many- um, so many of these What's things about mean? altering mind state and getting control of body and, and breathing and even the hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold thing just really boosts your immune system, doesn't it? I do that every day. In the shower, I do the hot, and then go cold, and then it's hot, and then it's cold. And you just, yeah! Yeah, you set up day. yeah well, that's it. I think that, um, you know, it's often more good than not. I mean, so I've heard some people say that only, um, you know, seasoned athletes should really be plunging themselves into a cold pool. Um, But they say the same thing about drinking a bottle of Powerade, don't they? Um, So, No, I haven't heard that at all. Well, well, you know, they say that, um, you know, Powerade's only good if you're an athlete, really. Other other than that, you're just fooling yourself. Right. (laughs) Like, you know... Yeah, I, I don't know either, but... Um, I can't do the sugar. Apparently, yeah, well, that's that's the thing. I mean, only an athlete really burns off that level of sugar. So yeah. it's um, not really a sports drink. It's more of a, an, an, a, a pro-athlete's drink that you're just enjoying. Why is it taking up so much bloody shelf space and all of our dairies and stuff? There? Oh, because it's covered in branding um, from the yeah. All Blacks, much like the Rexona... And Is that still going? The All Blacks. Yeah, the apparently. Rug- rugby thing, yeah. A lot of guys used yeah. to do years ago. Yeah. Yeah, apparently what they do is they run around um, for 90 minutes and chasing an atom. Yeah. <laughs> really? The ball. Is it the same? <laughs> have they changed it up at all or is it still the same thing? Just chase uh, the ball, chase the ball. <laughs> at least that dog, and the dog was really good to chase the ball. It just made me think. Why are we presenting ourselves as a country as being number one fucking ball chasers? You know what I mean? When a dog can do it better, why can't we focus on something that a dog and animals can't do and say, hey, we're really good at, you know, creative policy development or something, you know? We're good with biotech. 
But no, it's like, because no one ever needs a ball chase or they'll call New Zealand. You know what I mean? You're like, well, I can't. Yeah, dude. I find that a lot of sports know, sorry, uh, revolve bro. around chasing of this atom. Either you're chasing the atom, fighting for the atom, trying to get the atom through a couple of poles, a net, or into a hole. But, but why? I mean, we do some cool things and try to stick them onto other atoms and rearrange them so that we can um, have fun with them or do something useful in our bodies. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess each to their own, I suppose. Yeah. Whatever you choose to do with your life, you know, whatever's going to bring you the experiences that you need. Because you just go cruising through life, don't you? And you just, I was listening to something the other day about how we actually choose the idea that we choose all of the experiences, you know, before, and that we actually, we've actually chosen it all. Everything that happens is just, you know, we choose these experiences so that we can know ourselves, uh, so that our conscious higher self can just, can just know itself and understand itself better. And, um, and we have all these lives that we go through and live and, I don't know. <laughs> Wild stuff. Now, um, so Jacinda Arden is, uh, she's been in the White House this last week um, doing some international diplomacy, um, doing a bit of a stand up routine in front of uh, Yale, I think it was, or Harvard or Stanford, I forget. Uh, but irregardless, she was also on um, some freaking late, probably a paid slot on a late night. Uh, talk show um, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts first of all well it's I mean White House I mean she's been in the dog house before that so that's good for give her a break and um, <laughs> I just I just think just just let her have some time to chill out with her family and give her something else to do you know go and do something else I mean you had a good run with the you know trying to fulfill your vision and that's great but um, yeah, give us something else to do. Let her let us stay over there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we need. Much how did she? Uh, yeah. How did she turn into sort of like the climate slash gun poster child overnight? And well, was she always next, that? It's just the next thing. It's public are interested in this now. It's all about the COVID. It's all about the COVID. And then next thing, it's all about the. It's all about the guns. It's all about the war. It's all about bloody Ukraine. And now it's about. I don't know. I don't and how know. is it that how is it that we're always seemingly the best at everything that we ever try to do, or the fourth, or something? <laughs> oh, New Zealand! Oh my God, you guys handle like the COVID so well, didn't you? And and that mask massacre you had, that was handled well. It's because we put so much resource into PR. It's all just spin, and it's about buying the media. <laughs> And then just spinning, spinning, spinning. That's why they were the best at everything. You know, go to China, they're the best at everything. If you listen to their bought media as well. <laughs> There's a lot of people got sex. They don't get out, you know. But I don't know. That's my opinion. Just my opinion. Um oh, that's interesting, all right. Um now yeah. it's sort of become a uh tradition uh over the years now. I think John Key used to go on Lemon, I think it was, or or something, um, but these sort of late night, uh, sit down, paid promo things that they're doing now. The, I mean, it's it is good promotion. I see why they do it, but it just seems so ingenuous. It just kind of seems. I don't know. I, don't know. I just think. If I try to put myself in the shoes of a New Zealand Prime Minister, I think it would be an extremely difficult job. And um, she just looked like she was totally at breaking point. And I know what it's like to, to um, have to buy a whole lot of drugs off someone and they give you some shit that doesn't work and then have to go back to the party and then have to face up to everybody. Because I got in situations like that myself when I was a young guy and I wasn't used to dealing with big-ass, bad-ass drug suppliers. And it can happen to anyone. And I think that might that's the kind of situation I think she might have um, got herself into and um, doesn't look good. And um, she just looked like she was, she looked like she's just at her wit's end towards the end of that bloody COVID thing. And um, yeah, I think she's yeah. go, go chill out. A lot of work. Something else. Yeah. Yeah. I Take mean, she's years. kind I of, um, well, the, the thing is, she's young, right? So yeah. she's got no sort of resting to do at this point in her career. You know, she hasn't done her 30, years or something she's the like the a youngest world leader that 
I mean, Biden's falling apart. He's like a, a, a geriatric uh, invalid or something. Um, he's looking yeah. at her for leadership. Um, so I think she's going to be yeah. trotted around for years to come. I mean, Helen Clark's still fucking pushing paper around over at the uh, United Nations, isn't she? Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, all- we've had Davos this last week. She's a young globalist under the um, under the sort of tutelage of Klaus Schwab. Well, this is it. Um, it's all these World Economic Forum people that have been sort of groomed into this idea that um, governments uh, shouldn't really be working for the people. How about governments just work with big industry and uh, big industry will fund them and get what big industry wants? And, you know, you can't make everyone happy, so why not just make industry happy? And then the people can just fit in somehow as customers. That's the way the vision is. Governments have run out of money, and so big business is sort of stepping in. Instead of you guys being there for the people, just partner with us and let's just do what we want. And um, it'll work better that way. <laughs> and that's sort of what's happened. Governments are falling apart. I don't think they're going to keep providing health and social services. And so the community needs to rise up and go, thanks, government. You've been great, but... It's a little bit like you know when you stop being a teenager and you start being a grown up and you and it's like we love you guys but we kind of need to do our own thing now and I think that's where we're at as a community instead of and so instead of carrying on with capitalism which has now sort of reached the point of um of like a massive clot and it's like having a coronary at the moment um and so now we need to say okay let's stop doing that let's tell our um tell our young people now smart peter up entrepreneurs not to carry on with this um capitalism thing where you put all your ideas into ideas into into you know um structures where they just maximize profit and revenue for shareholders instead let's keep our ideas and community organizations now i'm just i'm trying to work out at the moment with my business that i've started how to get the constitution so that it says that the company at some point um buys back all shares of all investors so that profits don't get paid out to the people that invested they get their money back and they get a good return and that's it shut the door thanks guys now we're moving on for the remainder of time this organization the profits are going to go into providing health and services for the community that the community needs especially for those people that can't afford it um so that it becomes yeah. a community asset and let's just build back new community assets because all the other crown assets we used to have have been sold off and are now just a mess you know so start again that didn't well for a while but now it's time to leave home and set up our own services and so there's more communities starting to form around the place now where people are sort of do it yourself and more independent and not so sort of, not sort of relying on government you know yeah different uh ways of living uh being able to uh work as you say as a codependent community where you know you have different people fulfilling different roles and uh but hey as far as sort of working community goes uh on a slightly different tangent this gloria Vale sect that seems to have again imploded on itself and what about the last names on some of these characters uh pilgrim (laughs) surname pilgrim it all seems a little bit too uh cliche but uh I mean, you know, this is sort of the thing, you know, Um, when people say forming communities, going off grid, self-sufficient, some sort of, some of it starts to get a bit culty where it's sort of, um, you know, uh, they're coming for our guns sort of, you know, and then it sort of leads into that, the prepper thing, the, you know, 800 cans of corn in the in the fallout shelter um but it's getting a bit that way and that's why you've got peter peter teal coming down and trying to set up a compound down at bloody glen orkey and you've got kim.com over the hill with his uh compound and under the fucking volcano or whatever he's got up top um so i mean uh, you know we look at what the billionaires are doing and when they start sort of um stacking tins of beans <laughs> and buying solar panels uh it makes you wonder who where the cult is or, or or what is going on yeah time to well it looks there's going to be food shortages i think is what it is and so 
um, it's probably a good idea to learn how to make yourself some food. <laughs> yeah. For me, this this last this last year or two has been um, uh, restructured family becoming solo dad, and it's like, oh, geez, having to do all the meals and do all that, do all the cooking and all that kind of thing all the time. It's been really good, actually. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the next step. Is like uh, next house is going to have to have indoor garden adjacent to the kitchen, I think, and just have everything growing there. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that's so that way. gets, and that sort of transitions to the future of food. Okay, so the world's at war, um, oil prices are, are spiking. We try to drive you into electric cars that are made with all kinds of toxic fucking um, co cobalt mines, hand yeah. plucked by uh, the hands of, of children. Um, and then they're going to just say, we'll just eat bugs then. Eat um, synthetic food, 3D printed uh, organs from animals. The, the future is synthetic. You know, I mean, you, yeah. this is a great question for you. You know, you saw the real drugs. You could create a sy synthesis of that. Um, what do you foresee for the sort of synthetic alternative to okay. food shortage? What do I see is that at the moment, if we want to make a chemical, let's say whether we want to make um, MDMA, for a lot of people can relate to MDMA, um, or ibuprofen, a lot of people can relate to that one, or Viagra, okay, whatever it is. Um, sure. When we try to make that molecule, maybe we need to have a benzene, and we need to have an ethyl, and then we need to have an amine, we need to have all these bits and pieces. So for each one of those reactions of putting another part on, we get one chemical or another chemical, we put it in the reactor in a whole lot of solvents and some catalysts, and we cook it up and pressure it to the right amount, and then bloop, out comes the thing that we want, plus some other crap that we don't really want. Like we had some AB, and we had some XY, and we wanted to have some AY, so we connected them together, but we also ended up with some XB, you know? And so that other side chain reaction, that's toxic waste, so that has to get thrown out with all the solvents we did it in. So every time we do that reaction, for every kilo we make, we probably have about 20 kilos of toxic waste that we have to get rid of for all the medicines and pharmaceuticals and everything that we're making. So all this toxic waste, it's kind of not sustainable. And so moving forwards over the years, there's going to be new standards for chemical manufacture. And the moment everyone just says, oh, that's cool, no problem, do it in China or India or somewhere that doesn't matter. But unfortunately, yeah. these guys are still dumping in the same water in the same air and the same ground and there's still people living there so not sustainable so moving forwards if we want to keep making these things what we're going to have to do to get that sort of uh, maybe we've got that what do we say a benzyl ring and a, you're going to have to find some plant that knows how to make that benzyl and another plant or animal or um, piece of seaweed that knows how to make the ethyl and something else the amine and we need to go and get the dna out of those things and then stitch all that dna together into one synthetic piece and then feed that to, to a piece using brewing the same as we do with yeast feed it some sugar and then it biologically produces that thing that, we, that we're going to have to go to make a medicine so in about 20 years time all the pharmaceutical manufacturing chemical manufacture plants are going to have to shut down and move to biological instead because with biological manufacture there's none of that toxic waste and so um uh, you don't you don't you just end up with you just end up with exactly what you wanted to um to produce and there's no other toxic waste to get rid of but you've got all these kind of genetically manufactured kind of stuff that's the way that's that's where it's going to go and I okay think and so is that the ethical well. is that where the ethical problems come in because at what point is it a uh a high a, a becomes a hybrid <laughs> you know at what stage does something become um you know are we are we are we just using parts of multiple animals to create a or, or plants to create no, nah, it's just it's like brewing it. some beer, really, isn't it? You know, right. Right. like when you get okay. some Heineken, the guys up in um in the Netherlands made a particularly good brew, and so I think they're just taking they're just taking a yeast and just they could they could probably spell it out and then print it down here and use that same use that same yeast to make the Heineken here or make it wherever else they want, and so it's the same. <sighs> Brewing out brewing chemicals is that same sort of process. It's just taking that DNA and then spelling it out and synthesizing the DNA and using that piece of DNA then to mm. make what we want. It's biosynthesis. Right. 
that's a okay um, so that's gonna have to happen for our food as well i think if things get really tight yeah now is that going to make food um so it's going to it's going to replace the food we've been eating and it should make it more the supply chain will become more carbon neutral because you won't have to have all these um cows in the paddock and you won't have to have trucks will you it'll just sort of they'll just have a machine out the back and they'll just print it out of molecules i guess, I guess this is what's going to be happening yeah and then i guess we're gonna have we'll have, we'll have nano nanotech as well nanotechnology where we make these little <laughs> tiny little nanobots that stitch things together i don't know i don't know i'm hoping that we can just keep growing going with gardens and um i hate to admit it but i actually still like eating the animals you know <laughs> uh, i like the steak and the lamb yeah. and the pork and the chicken yeah so i mean probably about uh you know the last 20 years we've just seen all these farmers um get put into positions where they've had to uh put more and more money into their farms and take huge mortgages to afford these high tech um, cow milking machines that can do thousands of cows and everything's getting industrialized and it's getting to this level where it's starting to collapse. Uh, the food chain is starting to collapse uh, and um, maybe not here so much, but um, you know, the price of food's certainly increasing to a point where people's accessibility to good foods going to become limited. And as you said, um, you know, access to food. Um, and then we've got all these, um, all these farmers and people don't want to farm anymore. I mean, that's a big part of the problem. Um, people wanted to move to the big city and uh, make it big up in the big smoke. But now everybody is scared of the damn city. Uh, the city's a shithole. Yeah. <laughs> Auckland's kind so, of weird. I mean, I've been traveling around, and, and most places when you go to the city, it's kind of vibrant and exciting and alive, and there's lots of people, and you kind of dress up and go and hang out, and it's fun, and you can meet lots of people. But it's, it's really, really weird. So coming back to Auckland after living overseas for a few years, and just going to Queen Street or something. And a lot of time when you're walking around, it's just like, it's like empty. It's like these deserted, dark, spooky yeah. places, you know? That's the main yeah. the main drag. And you go up to K Road and, and um, possibly there's a bit of life now, isn't there? But Yeah, I think, um, I think the problem with Auckland has always been that it's built on the side of a damned hill and it's very disjointed. So you've got sort of three, you used to have four or five sort of party precincts. You'd have your downtown area, yes. um, your K Road, your Ponsonby. Then you'd have sort of have, it used to be a little bit at, at Parnell and then a little bit at Newmarket. And that was about it. And, yeah. um, and now uh, I think you've probably just got, you know, your, your three really which would be your downtown, your your K Road and your Ponsonby. Um, but as you say, uh, it does seem dark. It does seem kind of scary and depressing. And uh, a lot of businesses have been shut down because of all these tunnels they're putting in for all the light rail. Oh, so um, what's going on? All yeah, right. so they, they, basically, they basically spent billions to... Um, put light rail electrified under the city cool and in the process um they've shut down a bunch of main roads and basically boarded up the storefronts and turned the sidewalks into basically um tunnels but there's going to be some trains uh, eventually yay yeah you won't see Just them look, they'll yeah. all be underground so this, so, Angela, what about the loss of some of our most fertile land for agriculture in Pukekohe, once known as the food bowl, supplying produce for the country, and it's now filling up with terrace houses? What's going yeah, this on is, This is hugely problematic, and uh, I know that they 
produce brilliant uh, potatoes and onions out there at Pukekohe. And that's real handy to the city, but that's a great place. Uh, and, and I guess what's happened is um, what's happened is that the owners of the land have just got a, an offer that they can't refuse. But how come they could do that? Surely the land was previously zoned a certain way. Something must have changed for them to be able to chop it up and put houses on it. Is anyone really thinking about where we're going to be growing our food, I guess, is the question. Or Ooh. is there some conglomerate from overseas saying, nah, guys, you don't need to grow food. Just buy stuff from us. Or what's happening there, do you think? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, mate. But, um, you know, bugs. Maybe it's just, you know, you only need a few shipping containers to grow a stack of a ton of bugs, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I've been living in Thailand for five years, and I mean, there, there, you can go and buy grubs and um, whoops and um, all those sorts of things, kind of at the sort of at the supermarket and at the market. And then at night, there's people cruising around with with great big, you know, push carts full of you know cockroaches and all those kind of things. And people eat them more for a bit of a laugh, really. But some people eat the wasps and and that. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that's really my thing. Uh, I, would you, you know what? Them? I think you probably make anything taste good. It's just a matter of how it's cooked yeah. and prepared. Um, I think Angela Gibson. Get, just make your kids eat it from when they're small, and um, so they get used to it. And then the next, let, let the next generation deal with it. We're only freaking out about it in our heads. If we cooked it up right, eating it, we'd be fine. Just um, yeah, get the next generation to do it. My kids won't, but um, have you got any kids? No, I don't have any kids something to work on but um once you um once you get a couple popped out maybe get them on the bugs early now if you see them pick one up and put it in their mouth don't stop them just go oh good how's that nice yeah Yummy. yeah well Crunchy. that's the thing you know um it's sort of it's interesting that angela Jepson saying that they're able to get three crops a year out at pukekohe and uh the council is taxing them so hard oh that they are selling up is it just auckland city council that's bought into this vision of um the agenda for a super city because i remember before in a way and if you have a look on their website they're, they're they've definitely got the agenda the super city agenda and it seems like um they've auckland city council's really bought into this idea so maybe that's maybe that's what's going on Maybe yeah, I suppose what they did is they they've got that rail track going out to pukekohe again so I suppose that they want to try and get heaps of people out there if they can. Oh, they want more people really? there. So let's get more immigrants in and just chuck them on the train and whack them down to Pukekohe and yeah. whack them in some houses yeah. and then we'll grow our potatoes down further south, shall we? Yeah. I might get in South Island. That might be a smarter idea. Excuse me, I'm going to belt. Yeah, well, I mean, the South Island, the lower South Island is absolutely brilliant uh, yeah. as far as food production goes. But, yeah, it is a long way to haul it. And... Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting, and 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 the the trouble is, um, there's apparently a lot of food going to waste because we don't have the uh, the, the 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 workers to be able to pick it. Oh, it's because yeah, during that bloody COVID thing, they're stopping people coming in the country and stopping anyone going anywhere. So we just need to not do that again, I guess, and just yeah. Now, have you got any thoughts around? Views, um, um, no, sorry, have you got any any um, any opinion around the notion that these um, COVID lockdowns were also uh, climate lockdowns? I don't have an opinion on that. I haven't thought about it. What do you mean? Um, there's a huge agenda to try and wind back um, the impact of um, humans um impact on the environment and some some feel that a lot of these lockdowns were uh sort of the precursor to a wider climate sort of lockdown where uh they want to limit people's uh travel and their use of um you know certain uh vehicles or you know it's basically part of a wider climate 
seemed like the lockdown came the lockdown idea came out of a whole lot of protocols for dealing with the spread of virus and um those were kind of set up and have been sitting there for a while while when a virus came along people activated that big old practice run first um mm. um i don't know but I, I don't really know i don't know if that idea is backed by some evidence or if it's mm. or if it's just a fear now um what about another uh, another question from out of uh, out of there? Uh, Monkeypox. Yeah. Monkeypox. Um, so the thing that I think that people should be aware of is that a couple of years ago, when um, they were developing the injections, um, they wrapped them up in that lipid that's never really been tested before. And we skipped over the safety testing and just pretended like that was okay. From a medicinal um, development perspective, it's it wasn't really okay to just start using that lipid because it's never been tested. And the RNA stuff has never really been tested that well either. It has never really worked that well. And the issue, what we were saying a couple of years ago, I might even be on the show saying it is, hey, we need to look out in a couple of years' time that this might actually be sort of attacking our immune systems. And what we want to look out for and um, sort of next sort of two years at the time i've done all the testing that you know it's the most tested drug in the whole world it's like well no just because a lot of people have tested it in the short term that doesn't make up for a complete absence of long-term testing we don't we yeah, can't it really was authorized say, for no. emergency use and that what we might need to look out for in a couple of years the warnings were is that if it does kind of attack the immune system and cause the immune system to crash then we're going to suddenly see a whole lot of other diseases and things all springing up that were older diseases that are suddenly making a comeback and we don't know why and this is the reason is that, it, is that um if we keep getting injected with that those injections then it might actually be compromising our immune system and then recently just in the last few months if you check medsafe which is our government's yeah. official kind of um warnings and stuff on the warnings for the the drug the community drug they got from pfizer it um now is listed there as a potential as this um this ade the sort of the collapse of your immune system against other diseases and so that means that they're starting to see it and at the time all of the safety uh information we were told that we weren't going to see it pfizer didn't want anyone to see their results for 65 years 75 years or something yeah. but in america that got overturned in the courts and so now you can see the list of side effects and, and and it's now sort of come out that their trials were quite poorly run really and um yeah you know the list of potential harms from taking that drug uh you know it's probably good if people were able to have the conversation about it and say well how, what do we do about our collapsed immune system now and and um when a new disease sort of comes along maybe we could just see it in that context rather than oh there's another virus outbreak which because the thing that we need to look out for is that as um this guy Hatchard pointed out when he was looking at, you know, I, I had the same thing. I asked the Ministry of Health and some official information at requests, you know, when's the other safety information coming out about natural health? And where's the natural health sort of, you know, conversation happening? And and I just got told, well, no, there's none of that happening. Nothing is going on. And I was kind of really concerned at how our Ministry of Health had changed so much. I pointed out that they looked to a committee, I don't have the name for it right now, a sort of a chat room, if you like, globally for um, how to advise your people. And it's been sort of really compromised by um, commercial interests. And so the information that's coming to us health-wise through our governments and that is really coming from, um, from private interests. Um, such as the people that are developing these synthetic medicines. And the thing we need to look out for is that we might, we don't want to get into a situation where all the advice that we're getting is coming from someone that's trying to sell us a drug and the next drug or a series of more drugs, particularly when yeah. those drugs aren't being safety tested um, because yeah. you know, because they, then our government's advising us to go in a direction that really just profits, um, you know, the guys selling the drugs, their corporate partners rather yeah. than, community and i think we're starting to we in fact we do we need our own independent health council i think in new zealand now um alongside of the government because we we do see our prime minister and these groups being trained up by world economic forum to um to really build that partnership between big industry and governments and the stakeholder that's missing is, is us the, the the consumers the people and so the people need our own independent advice um, and it's not good enough just saying, okay, any doctor that lets people know that um, there might be side effects from this drug is not allowed to talk anymore. That's, that's not good. You know, I've got four yeah. friends 
two who had heart attacks after the injections and two that had strokes and um, two yeah. like, people that had uncontrollable bleeding. Um, three in Europe and three in New Zealand, identical kind of situations. And all those in Europe, their doctors told them, oh, this is, this is a result of the injections that you had. And in New Zealand, same situation. Oh, this has got nothing to do with the injections. Don't ever think that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Ah! yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, okay. Um, so mm -hmm. as far as monkeypox, I guess we should just be on the on, on the lookout um, and mm. just sort of just just keep an eye on that one because um, you know I mean they're already probably talking about editing some mRNA and trying to whip it in there. Um, yeah, it's all just a bit. Um, yeah, it's all just a bit strange, really. This whole, uh, you know, vaccine for Most, rent, I guess. Vaccine a for large, rent. large, large community of people formed who um, quite legally, within their rights, chose not to take that injection. Um, and I'm one of those people. I didn't have those injections, and I did get COVID, and so did a lot of my friends. And um, not, there's not a lot of difference between those people that did have the injections and those that didn't. Um, most people will know now that, in fact, it didn't really stop you catching the, the disease and, you, and it wasn't really a lot of different. Um, and really yeah. the science was sort of saying that vitamin D was the main, um, the main sort of biomarker, if you like, that predicted whether you were going to get real severe COVID or not. It was about your vitamin D levels, not how many injections you'd had. So that was... Um, I think we all have to learn from that and then look at who was telling us if we go wind back and look at what sort of warnings we were getting from the government and from other sources and everyone was saying that everyone else is telling lies and let's move forward and look at what the results were and now analyze again who was telling the truth back there who we should have been listening to you know um and everyone needs to come to those conclusions for themselves i think mm. yeah very interesting very interesting indeed um what else what else is happening at the moment uh, very, lots of ram lots raids of media. do you need to talk about that um i what think that, everyone, has everyone that's addicted to news about messy drug and alcohol fueled breakups and divorces should have their own one. <laughs> oh, right yes the johnny depp amber heard case yeah, that's really sort of dominated world uh, media for the last uh, month and a half. Kind of glad that's over. Get yeah. out of my feed. Uh, yeah, was it in your feed as well? It was in all of mine when I looked on the um, the Facebook every day. The only, like, maybe 40% of videos that I was being showed was this horrible divorce trial, you know? I just been through yeah. my own the divorce and and I've been you know seen what happens with alcohol and meth and cocaine and all those kind of things all, all by myself. I don't need to so watch someone else going through it. <laughs> Bloody earth, man! Now, um, what about Auckland? We seem to have gone into a bit of a social decline where um, we've got um, certain uh, individuals in our society are choosing to go ahead and do all sorts of ram raids and there seem to be a few um, drive-by shootings happening and a bit of um, uh, gang rivalries and a bit of turf turf war happening um, Kaikoui seems to have uh, had to place a Rahui on the town and Auckland City had uh, multiple shootings uh, over the weekend or earlier, earlier last week What's happening out there? Well, I don't know. It's, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I, <laughs> it wasn't I, you. <laughs> um, so what, people are getting desperate. People are willing to take um, greater risks than they once were. Or is it just um, they're just seeing what they've seen on the news and they're just copying what, what's happening in America? Are people losing touch? Are people losing touch with reality? Have they, is that part of isolation? Is that what's happened with, with isolation and, and lockdown? Is Possibly. That, they've just been in maybe people are Maybe people are feeling sort of trapped in the, with the isolation. Sort of, I don't know. Society's, but, kind, um, 
it's not as cohesive as it was there was so much division that was being um enforced on us and um division was being fed to us through psychological manipulation through that whole exercise and it's just it's divide and conquer people are just the value of each other's lives has been reduced now um what, what are your thoughts or um do you have any opinion on um they were actually apparently the government spent a ton of cash um sort of trawling social media engaging um the satisfaction of the nation uh through online um information and intel gathering i suppose you'd call it um throughout the covid uh thing any thoughts on that um um there's a certain kind of a personality type i think psychologically you could profile if this government was a person and all it was doing was spending all of its time concerned with what everybody else thought of it um then that wouldn't be a person whose opinion you'd want to trust is it you know would it be that's that's just right yeah i don't so know rather than weird rather sort of than being yeah. genuine and it's sort of more trying to gauge on, on and how it should act yeah they're just measuring opinion. public yeah it's, it's tricky i guess for a politician because you just always got to measure public opinion because that's the only platform that you can stand on um, now, um they're feeding they're just listening for echoes because they've put so much effort into because we used to have the kind of you know the fourth estate the media which would keep keep them in keep the power balance in check but um we've kind of dissolved that under this um um what i think was you know like a, a sort of a false threat really um things were kind of blown way out of proportion in order to dissolve that fourth estate and to sort of break those walls down and and um and and give government ultimate power it's sort of what it's, it's what it's turned into in new zealand isn't it so um, we've got a um i'm not sure if we've read this but uh, a comment from uh amanda tom here societal unrest possibly a sign of financial pressure from cost of living rises and associated depression yeah quite quite possibly and um so a very interesting conversation that we're having here on the on the <laughs> broadcast tonight very the fun thing is indeed. i mean i'm actually becoming conscious of uh do you like this to be uh voiced and aired and out there for everybody to see you know we're coming into this age of um having a social score based on how well you support the, exactly the government exactly now that's the next point that i was actually um working towards uh in canada recently it's just been revealed um that the Ca canadian government allegedly was um doing mass surveillance and actually tracking citizens throughout the pandemic uh to monitor their movements uh, and to get ideas of um how the lockdowns worked for, for example um mm. a huge um concern that people had with having these vaccine apps um and using them and being track and traced was this concern of being um uh basically a credit score much like which is used for you already here for our um uh financial credit score but this is like a social credit score uh and then that's people's concern with um these lockdowns and there's basically this idea it's the real me id it's like a global id uh and, and that is what it what it is to get to get that payment or any of those um subsidies or loans or anything like that you needed to get your global id which is your real id real me and um get on the system and have all your all your information on there too so the real me that we have like today i um 
um, what did I do? Something at the company's office or um, filed a trademark. I filed the trademark extra life so that I've got an extra life trademark, you know. And I used a real me to log in to the government to do that. Is that what you're talking about? Is it yeah. the same thing? Is that global? Yeah, yeah that's part Go. of the global ID. Huh. That's a bit... Yeah, they give it different names in different places, but that's basically your global ID number uh, for this new sort of system. And um, a good way of getting everyone on board, of course, was to offer free money. <laughs> and um, it certainly worked on on some sort of scale, I'd imagine. Um, oh, well. But yeah, okay, well, that's people's concerns. I mean, they'll always say um, that all the data has been anonymized and things like that. And I must say that the real yeah. me system and, and all that works pretty well. For um, <laughs> for getting like sub sub subsidy checks or whatever they called them, you know, that all worked pretty flawlessly. I thought, pretty good system. Yeah, I wasn't here for that. I don't really put out my hand for government money. Maybe I should. <laughs> oh mate, they put out they put out their hand for fucking people's money. Yeah, <laughs> and that's yeah, the thing. It's yeah. not really government money, is it? No, no. I think if you if you ever have a bit of a run in with the government, like 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 I might have done, and they want to take you down, what you find is that they um they go to the revenue. And the revenue guys have got a um um it's one person. It's one person who sits at one office. Is it the commissioner? And maybe it's not the commissioner, but the one person who is the inland revenue is is always a foreign national. So when they they get the country, and because they're a foreign national, they've got diplomatic um immunity. They don't. They're allowed to do whatever they want, really. They don't really have yeah, to right, right, right. follow yeah, the law. So, yeah, and it's that's the person that's doing the stuff. And so that's the person you're up against. That's what the entity is. It's that it's that one person. And then and then if they um you know, then they can leave and put another one in. They've got immunity. And so if you go up against them, then you know, you don't win. <laughs> this is the idea. Because they because they, they don't represent the government or the people. They represent the group that owns the fair currency that we're using. <laughs> Yeah, it's privately owned currency that we hooked on. <laughs> yeah, and so if you want to use the currency, you got to do things their way. And if they uh, want to, they switch you off, and then you need to go some of that. And talking about yeah. switching off currency, pretty amazing what happened in Canada with the protests where they would actually just shut down people's bank accounts. Yeah, Canada's pretty advanced, kind of down that same pathway. They've got their leader is trained up in the same sort of schools as New Zealand's leader. And, um, uh, yeah. yeah, and so, you know, I think once you understand all these things, then you, you go down that kind of rabbit hole, you, um, you can either go into a real state of fear or, uh, you can just, you need to really consciously choose not to do that and to still enjoy your life and to think, well, you know what, I'm a conscious, I'm a, I'm a higher conscious being and, you know, I manifest with my will and the rest of humanity are manifesting in fear. And if people are in fear, then they're manifesting this horrible, dark world and you're living in it all the time. And and um, mm. the challenge really well, is not to go there and to keep your energy in a place of um, which is light and which is not in fear. And uh, mm. <laughs> I now, um, bring that to balance. Yeah, I do appreciate that. Um, Matt, but um, I just wanted to make a quick mention about um, handguns. Apparently, handguns they've put a f huge freeze on handguns in Canada. Have you heard? No, I haven't heard about that. Um, I don't have too many gun toting Canadian friends. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. I've got some great stories about <laughs> times in Canada that I probably shouldn't bring out now. <laughs> <laughs> they're taking their guns well, off. Uh, well, they've put, apparently they've put their cap in the market. They've put a freeze: no new guns, no swapping, um, no trading, something like that. <laughs> and apparently, yeah, handguns. Apparently, handguns sold out overnight. Yeah, I bet. Wow, because yeah. America's got a thing going on with their guns all the time as well. Bloody ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it's out of control, really, isn't it? Do you like shooting it is guns? Out of control. Yeah, I like love shooting, shooting guns. guns. Yep. Yeah, 
Love me guns. Fantastic. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I've actually um, shot kangaroos and um, there's nothing like going over to Australia and uh, shooting their national icon. Benny. <laughs> but they're, um, they're a pest species and um, they actually have to cull them and um, they will actually um, come through and destroy a, a farmer's crop overnight. They're huge. Yeah. They're kind of like um, a gang of six foot people going through and destroying the place. Careful, mate. There can be vegetarians watching. Crikey! Ben, if, if, and if. Yes, we can. Uh, ben Littler, shout out to you. Uh, ben Littler, uh, we do see you. Do you have a question? Can everybody see Ben's text? We can. Yeah, okay. We can all see it. It's all good. Tell us a joke. There we go. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so, um, man, oh, man. There's a lot happening uh, at the moment. A lot of uh, societal unrest. But I tell you, in New Zealand, we've got it pretty damn good down here. Uh, it's, but the superstorm. There's a freaking superstorm. Have you have you noticed the superstorm out there today at all, brother? I guess I haven't been watching the news, but I have seen quite a lot of stormy weather over the last few days, and I really enjoy it. Actually, I kind of like the real. I like the buzz as long as I'm not doing it, and um, just sort of mm. making mental notes as well. Next house, top of hill, not bottom of hill. You know what I mean? Eh, 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 <laughs> you don't want right. the water coming. <laughs> exactly okay well uh hey you stay safe out there in the uh this crazy world and in the superstorm and uh, i think we're going to wrap this broadcast up it's been a, a hour of power what happened with with um with selenia she's like eva minutes oh she's she's backstage drinking wine and um doing research I think she's drinking wine. What yeah. did the fast tomato say to the slow tomato? Said Ben. I don't know. What did the fast tomato say to the slow tomato? Ketchup. <laughs> Certainly did. Thank okay, you. well, uh, Matt, uh, Starboy Bowden, thank you so much for coming on to the show, buddy. And all the best with that yep. Vice, uh, Vice video. Um, <coughs> yep. so hopefully that gets you a bit more traction. Yeah. For your, yep. uh, if anyone wants to track us down, I'm at Bowden.com, and then that'll take you to my Facebook page, and the Vice thing's posted there. There's a massive Vice story they did with me maybe five or six years ago where you know, they came really – they rocked up at my house and said, oh, Shane Smith told us to come down here and um, make you a rock video, and we want to film in your drug lab. So we filmed in the drug lab. We started making a rock video. We were cruising around, and we went down to Hell's Gate, and we're standing out in the mud just, fucking, you know, with just like sulfur chlorine gas all around and just like, you know, drones flying around and started to sink in the mud with the guys are going off behind. It's like – and then they said, actually, the real reason we're here, we, want, we want to get into all the drug labs in china we, we reckon that you can get us in there we've got big factories that make um you know interesting chemicals over there and say hey can we come and film a rock video in your in your factory and so we ended up you know we had to come in and make this rock video and so they got in there into all the drug factories with their uh, cameras and that and filmed and so there that was a really interesting one and um that was a few years ago so that's on my mattbowden.com page and then there's another one just last week that came out was the english channel from the war on drugs documentary and um and yeah that was fun yeah now did they was that new content for the uh english one it was basically what they did is they um they, they just wanted to do a zoom much like we're doing here and so i just sat here in this room and set the lights up and just chit chatted for a while and then they went and got archive footage said hey i'll do this but go and get the archive footage of my rock video because i never got my rock video you know and you know it's good to have okay rock so I think the first if one was Hamilton Pharmacopoeia. Hamilton Morris Pharma. Yeah, that's what's called. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, were they able to pull footage from them? Yes. Yes, they were. That's what they did. Yeah. 
Okay, and they supplied you with your your, your content. Did no, they give you... no, oh, I'm well, still. Yeah, right, you but... better. Yeah. Okay. Need to find a way to reach out to um to Shane Smith, I guess. Extra. Yeah. Okay. So life. um, let's have a quick uh, conversation about what we're we're up to here. Okay. So. Um, there is a, uh, based on the research of Harvard scientist David Sinclair, who found that, um, who found that uh, with mice that were elderly and not yes. able to have families anymore, he, um, it was because the NAD levels were low. He, he theorized that aging is um, something that happens when your NAD levels go low. And that if you restore your levels of NAD, which is an enzyme in your cells, which transmits electrons from one cell to the next, then maybe something will change with that aging. And so he gave the mice um, this, this NMN compound in their water, and they started running around having families again. He started using it himself. And for five years, people have been using the supplement um, nicotinamide mononucleotide and another form, nicotinamide riboside. When you put these, um, when you consume these um, natural compounds, they raise your NAD levels. And so this is what I'm doing is making this available for people here in New Zealand. And so if you come to my website, this extralife.co.nz, you can order a sample, um, sample pack for 20 bucks, which is uh, 10 pills over a week. And within that week, I reckon you're probably going to feel it and notice that you're thinking it's just rewound to, to, to how it was when you were younger and your body just starts to feel different. You feel a little bit sharper. And if you keep doing it for, um, you know, for 90 days, then you tell me is those, those, strand parts on the end of your dna strands which are gradually getting shorter every day they double in length um doubling your telomeres in length means that your dna is able to repair itself so if your cells are starting to get old and start heading towards cancer um, because they the dna has lost its kind of um uh, self-image then um extending your telomeres causes the um causes the um causes the DNA to be able to repair itself. And so you're less likely to um, to get those cancers as the theory. And you just feel a whole lot better, feel a whole lot younger, can run around and think a whole lot more clearly. So come to the website and try that product if you're interested in the latest in life extension uh, or uh, longevity technology. And what we're going to do here in New Zealand is build a lab that looks, I'm so jealous of your backdrop, as like the lab I had before. We're going to be taking some of these compounds and um, making a whole lot of different modifications to them because um, my team believe firstly that we can improve um, that molecule to make it uh, more potent so that you need less of it so that it's less expensive and secondly to wrap it in a way that gets to where it needs to go into the cells more effectively so again that you need even less of it and it becomes even cheaper so that we can give it to more people so that's one that's some of the research we're going to be doing here in New Zealand for longevity um, along with other research into psychoceuticals which is my word for um, psychedelic uh, pharmaceuticals for trauma oh superb now um the telomeres were, were they uh what causes the shortening of telomeres is that from toxic environments or i think so it's environment it's so telomeres so you got your, your your chromosomes the telomeres are the tips the the bottom the, the the bits on the ends and they just get shorter at 35 um and what is it something in the biochemical environment in the cell i don't know i'll have to look that up <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. okay well thank you so much uh, yep. for imparting all that knowledge onto us about uh nads etc and telomeres and uh yeah. I, i'm gonna i'm gonna have to try and get on that stuff um i'm feeling like, you know i'm 40 this year i'm feeling like i need to uh sort of uh yeah. get the hack get the hack just try it and see if it, just see how you feel. I'll get you some and I'll get some to uh, Selenia. You guys are not old at all. You're still in your prime and shining, but hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Laddie, what's the pills? Awesome, mate. Well, we appreciate you so much. We appreciate every second of your time. Thanks for being with us here again, my friend. That's we really are blessed and it is a blessing. Infinite white light, brother. Infinite white light. And um, <laughs> we will be back again with you soon. Thank you, everybody that's watching at home. 
And uh, yeah, we'll wrap up the show. Thanks, Selena. If you want to come on okay. board and uh, oh yeah, I have a, sorry, I have a promo to do for tomorrow. Oh, but first of all, first of all, uh, well, I think you're both futurists, in my opinion. That you're both very knowledgeable and have an advanced state of mind. So you know how <laughs> to <laughs> you know how to talk and you know how to dig deep into some very serious topics. So we've gone for an hour and a half tonight, pretty much three minutes wow. away from nine thirty. So uh, yeah, you um yeah, a lot oh, to yeah. share, Matt. You have some wonderful stories and you're a great storyteller and I think you should be on the stage more often. <laughs> hey, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mate. So I'm making um, a TV show. I took my book and made it into an autobiography and I've given it to a couple of groups who've looked at it and said, there, you could probably get a few seasons on Netflix out of that because it's all kind of rock and roll, yeah. good, uh, kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, let's like fast track you to Netflix. Do it. So, working on that, how do you get into a script? So, just making the first episode and then just pitching it out there and like an underbelly. Oh, yeah. Of yeah, okay. Well, uh, let's work on who we know between us, and I think we could um, make some magic here. <laughs> oh. We'll have to yeah. ship it out and ship it out. Thanks, Benny. That was All a good right. buzz. No yeah. problem whatsoever. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. Bye-bye, Matt. All right. Bye. I'm going to buddy. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh. Well, thanks, Selena. We're going to wrap the show up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, I'll, uh, just, I'll just say... You've got, you got an announcement to make? Yeah, yes, an announcement. Uh, tomorrow, Michelle Henderson. Um, we have, I think, a spiritualist dude. Uh, Super. Sorry, I, he's, his name's slipped my mind, but um, we'll be sharing all that information tomorrow on the facebook page um yeah so that's tomorrow at eight yeah so that's usually just a half hour show on friday okay yeah. well yeah you so, gotta be uh, there to watch it everybody we're gonna wrap the show up right about now and uh that is a, another episode of talk back with benny mac <laughs> okay bye Good night, everybody.